Hi there and welcome. This is the VCIC training. Uh, my name is Jeff Boardman. I work for LearnVC and our other website is VC Hub. This presentation was generated over a couple of years uh, using multiple sources which we've tried to credit on this page. Uh, this may not be complete accreditation for everyone, but as we learn more about who we've missed, we'll keep adding those on there. Starting off with the venture capital partners. There are limited partners, which you hear about a lot as the LPs. This is the money of the, of the different funds. So what happens is the corporate and private pension plans want access to high-risk investments as part of their portfolio. Well, they put money into venture capital funds. And there's venture capital firms, which is actually the general partners, and they manage those funds and the investments that those funds make. So venture capital firm versus venture capital funds. These are passive investors. They don't actually get actively involved with the decisions for how the investments are made. And, of course, the VCs are the ones that are managing that on behalf of their limited partners. Understanding judges for the competition, then, there's operational partners, which are typically experienced CEOs for start companies, gone through some ex exits, and basically have the street cred to go out there and talk about uh, how to run a company. They think about a return for an investment into a startup company as being, you know, 5x your money in five years, that's pretty good. And the reason that's interesting is because if you look at the venture partner, they're more financial background focused, and they look at things um, slightly differently. They know that five times your money in five years doesn't exactly meet the hurdle rate. And the hurdle rate, I'll, I'll mention the next slide here, but the important thing is that uh, for BCIC, you want to be swinging for the fences. Um, to justify the amount of risk that you're taking, you want to have the potential of at least 10 times your money for that initial investment into the company. So if you look at the hurdle rate then, um, on, the, on the top here, you're at, you have how many years it takes to get to that um, exit, and then this is the multiple on the money that you put in cash on cash basis. So five times your money in five years is 38% IRR. Well, that's, that doesn't meet the hurdle rate. The hurdle rate is everything that's in yellow, uh, below the hurdle rate line uh, or above 40% IRR is what they're targeting for their returns. So if a deal is actually presented and the business plan says that they want to return to their investors 30% IRR, that's not a good indication for the experience of the entrepreneur uh, working with investors. So looking at how this works, the limited partners, let's say there's 15 limited partners, they put money into the venture capital fund. They it's called a capital commitment. Let's say that fund itself is $125 million. Um, they provide cash to the startup companies, and in return for that, let's say there's 10 companies, they take back preferred stock. And hopefully, at some point, they sell that company and or that company goes public, and they return capital back to their investors. Now, what happens with that? Is $125 million to invest for a $125 million fund? No, because there's management fees. What they basically do is take 2% uh, for each year for 10 years is the typical term. Um, they take those in management fees. This is the venture capital firm itself. Uh, so then you only have $100 million left. Let's say you do 10 deals with, those, uh, with that money. That gives you $100 million. So the economics of the VC fund is if you have 10 investments that you've done there for $10 million, uh, hopefully some of those do really, really well. The home runs out there, you get 10 extra money, if not you know, close to that, 8x. Um, some of these will return zero money. Uh, so if that happens, you have to have some deals that make a lot of money to make up for the deals that you lose all your money at. So let's say there's $300 million to be distributed then. Uh, right off the top, they have to return the principal to the limited partners. That $125 million comes right off the top. That gives only $175 million to distribute amongst the limited partners and the general partners. Now, you'll hear the term carried interest. Carried interest is typically 20% of those proceeds after the principal has been taken out. Um, that percentage is actually given to the general partners, whereas the remainder, of course, is given to the uh, limited partners. Another thing to note is that that there's funds, there's multiple funds typically with successful VC firms. So they may have raised a couple different funds over the years, and they have investment periods and harvest periods. And the reason this is important is because if you're at this stage with VCIC, and you're actually in a fund two or a fund three, you have a lot of other companies that you're still managing as well. There's a lot of portfolio companies that you're still working with on a, on a daily, if not weekly basis. So understanding that uh, becomes more 
uh, about why uh, about why the competition actually has this fund profile. So let's say again the size of the fund pro the fund is 150 million dollars or 125 million dollars I was using before, but uh, for the VCIC event, maybe it's $150 million, maybe it's $80 million. Um, they'll give you some details about the fund. And all the details that are kind of shown on this fund profile, let's kind of take each one of those individually. They mentioned that the commit, committed capital, 15% committed, what does that mean? Well, you're going to be investing some money, but you're also going to be reserving money for your portfolio companies, especially if you're in an early stage investor. If you're like a C stage investor, you might invest $1 million and save $2 million, what they call your dry powder for future rounds of that company. And understanding the actual complete capital requirements of the entrepreneurs is what you want to be doing. If it's not in the business plan, you need to ask that during the due diligence session because you need to understand how much money this is really going to take out of your fund. Um, and given all the different portfolio companies you want to have in that fund, you need to understand the implications of that. If it's a later stage fund that you've been given, then most likely you're going to be reserving less because you're coming into the company so much later on. Active versus passive, which is another thing off that fund profile during the competition. This comes back to um, you're taking a board seat if you're an active investor in a deal. And if you're a if you have a board seat and you as a partner have you know if you're sitting on a ten boards, that's too much for you to handle. So that goes back to looking at how many people are involved with the VC firm, hypothetically speaking, in the competition, and making sure that you you're not over committing yourself if you were to invest in the company and want a board seat. Almost always, you're going to want to take an active board seat for VCIC, but understand the implications of that is something that I wanted to at least point out. Now, the fund size, that overall determines how much money you have per company. Uh, so that's another thing to kind of keep in mind. If it's, if it's a company that's asking for $200,000 and you're a $200 million fund, does that totally make sense? Um, you have to look at those kind of things in context of the competition and what other deals are available to you and what actually is interesting to you in those deals that you're looking at. And the number of funds, I mentioned that before with the number of board seats. Uh, for the competition itself, you're basically cramming in an insane amount of stuff into a very short period of time. And so let's look at the investment process in general. You usually have a referral, you, have a, you, know, you first meet the entrepreneur, all the way until the actual deposit uh, money actually is given and they actually deposit that into their bank account. It usually takes a really long time. And one way to kind of look at that is you have a lot of due diligence, a lot of things that kind of go into it over months of time that in this competition you're only given 15 minutes to actually ask questions of the entrepreneur to get you know, some kind of rapport with the entrepreneur to ask all those kind of critical things and un- uncover those um, fairly large red flags potentially that you want to know go into, going into a negotiation. Um, you don't want to be surprised. And as the judges get to watch all these different sessions, they get a lot of expertise about these companies because they sit in the same room with that one entrepreneur. So they see all the teams interview that one entrepreneur. So if you don't under, under, uncover those fairly large issues and or those large risks, then uh, you don't look as good against your peers in that review. Now, of course, the negotiation, we actually offer the term sheet and, and actually come to hopefully some kind of slight consensus with the entrepreneur. That, of course, takes more time later on in the normal process. But the other thing to keep in mind for the competition is that you're going to be working with this set of entrepreneurs for potentially years and years and years. You're going to be sitting on the board with them. You, you're eventually going to hopefully work with them to actually sell the company at some point. Um, that, thus, establishing rapport and actually wanting to work with them on the longer term is fairly important.